so the first kind of relation which we are going to study is the reflexive relation is the reflexive relation assume we are every relation which we are going to define it will be defined over set a if the set a is going to contain 1 comma 2 comma 3 comma 4 then we know what is a cross a so a cross a is going to contain 1 comma 1 1 comma 2 1 comma 3 1 comma 4 2 comma 1 2 comma 2 2 comma 3 2 comma 4 3 comma 1 3 comma 2 3 comma 3 3 comma 4 and 4 comma 1 4 comma 2 4 comma 3 and 4 comma 4 so I'm writing it here because I don't want to write it again or again for every type of relation which I will specify so I'm going to specify all these different types of relations over this above set okay so the first type of relation is a reflexive relation so what is a reflexive relation a relation is called as reflexive or a can say relation R on a given set A is called reflexive whenever it is uh, that means if it is going to contain all the ordered pair which is x comma x r x uh, that where x belongs to the a set a so what i mean to say is so the relation for example on assume for on the set a cross a so on the set a if you are always going to get the if all the x is related to x if all the x is related to x for all x belong to the relation a then it is called as reflexive or in so in other in other sense i can also write it like this a relation r a relation r a relation r on set a a relation r on set a is said to be reflexive is said to be reflexive is said to be reflexive if if x r x for all x belong to the set a if x r x for all x belong to the set a what does it mean for example for example over a cross a we define a relation r1 which is x comma y such that x is divided by y x is divided by y and and x comma y belong to the set a cross a and x comma y belong to the set a cross a so what are the element which this relation is going to have this relation is going to have 1 comma 1 because 1 is dividing 1 2 comma 1 because 1 is dividing 2 3 comma 1 because 1 is dividing 3 it is 2 comma 2 because 2 is dividing 2 4 comma 1 because 1 is dividing 4 it is 3 comma 3 because 3 is dividing 3 it is 4 comma 2 because 2 is dividing 4 it is 4 comma 4 because 4 is dividing 4 now for all the x for all the x that means here I am saying for all x belong to the set A that means for all the element x which are belonging to the set A the ordered pair which is 1 comma 1 2 comma 2 3 comma 3 and 4 comma 4 they will be there 1 comma 1 2 comma 2 3 comma 3 4 comma 4 they should be there okay so for example if I define the relation R2 which is going to contain the element 1 comma 1 2 comma 2 3 comma 3 and 4 comma 4 now this relation R2 is also reflexive this relation R2 is also reflexive and this relation is also reflexive this relation is also reflexive now if I assume if I am defining one more relation R3 which is going to contain 1 comma 1 2 comma 2 and 3 comma 3 right so it is containing the ordered pair which is 1 1 2 2 3 3 but it is not containing the ordered pair which is 4 4 that means when I'm saying a relation is reflexive that means if a set A is going to contain 1 2 3 and 4 that means these four elements then the, all the pairs where 1 is related to 1 2 is related to 2 3 is related to 3 and 4 is related to 4 that should be there now this relation is not reflexive this relation is not reflexive because it is not containing the ordered pair which is 4 comma 4 right now if I write an example like this let us assume this relation R4 which is containing 1 comma 1 2 comma 2 3 comma 3 4 comma 4 1 comma 2 1 comma 4 now this relation is also reflexive on the above set A 
it is also reflexive on the above set a why because it is containing all the ordered pair which is 1 comma 1 2 comma 2 3 comma 3 4 comma 4 and these are the extra pairs they can be there may not be there if they are there doesn't matter if they are not there doesn't matter they should satisfy the condition or the constraint of the relation but these ordered pair which is 1 1 2 2 3 3 and 4 4 they should always be there for a reflexive relation right now you can see by the, the above example you can see by the above example because if you are having 1 2 3 and 4 are, as the elements then the reflexive relation should always contain 1 1 2 2 3 3 and 4 4 if there are 5 elements that is 1 2 3 4 and 5 in that scenario the reflexive relation should always contain 1 1 2 2 3 3 4 4 and 5 5 for the other elements we have a choice for the other elements we have a choice right so this now that, that brings a very important question for me that uh, that is a very actually for not for me for everyone there is a very important question what I mean to say is assume this we have a set A now this set A is going to have exactly four elements it is having exactly four elements and this A cross A is going to contain 16 elements then question is how many relations can be there over the set A which are reflexive how many relations can be there over the set A which are reflexive and we need to answer this question right so how many relations as here you can show that we have so many different relations I can show you how many relations are there but just just for general term just for general term we need to give a very simple example let me take a very very small example because this example will become very difficult and it will be very tedious to write on this board this board will be short for this actually so let us assume we have a relation A we have a set A which is containing the elements which are 1 and 2 it is only containing the element 1 and 2 and let me define it like this let me define it like this assume we have a set B which is containing the element 1 comma 2 and we know what is B cross B B cross B is going to be 1 1 1 2 1 2 1 and 2 2 we know what is B cross B it is not difficult to understand right so you already know this now if a relation has to be reflexive that means that relation has to contain these ordered pair these ordered pair should be there now let us write all the reflexive relations which are possible over B so what are the reflexive relations which are possible over B there's a relation R1 which can contain 1 comma 1 and 2 comma 2 now this relation is reflexive over B right I'm defining this relation over this B cross B okay this relation is reflexive why because it is containing all these paired which is XRX now there's a relation R2 which is containing 1 comma 1 2 comma 2 and 1 comma 2 now this relation is also reflexive this relation is also reflexive why because it is containing the ordered pair 1 1 2 2 right we can have a relation R3 which is 1 comma 1 2 comma 2 2 comma 1 now this relation is also reflexive why because it is containing the ordered pair 1 1 1 and 2 2 again there's a relation r4 which is containing the ordered pair 1 1 2 2 1 2 and 2 1 now this relation is also reflexive why because it is containing the ordered pair 1 1 2 2 right now we have these four relations which are reflexive but even if we have a relation like this we have a relation r5 which is 1 comma 1 and 1 comma 2 now this relation is not reflexive why because it is not containing the ordered pair which, which is 2 comma 2 it is not reflexive right in the same way if we define a relation r6 then it is 1 comma 1 2 comma 1 it is not reflexive if we define a relation r7 if it is 2 comma 2 and 2 comma 1 it is not reflexive why because it is not containing the ordered pair that means every reflexive relation has to contain the ordered pair which is x R x x is related to x for all the x or for all the elements which are belonging to the set B here and which are belonging to the set A in that case okay now in in the case of B how many reflexive relations are there there are 1 2 3 and 4 there are four relations which are reflexive okay and B is containing only two elements now assume assume like this if a set A if any set is containing one element then how many reflexive relations are there only one reflexive relations are there 
only one reflexive relation is there. For example, let us assume there is a set C which is containing the element only 1. Then C cross C is going to contain the element which is 1 cross 1. So any relation which is possible over C, there are two relations possible over C. First relation is, first relation is empty set which is not containing anything and the second relation is going to be containing this only one element right so if a relation is if a set is having only one element in that case only one reflexive relation is possible now if this set is containing two elements this is one comma two in this case there are four reflexive relations which are possible there are four reflexive relations which are possible right so you 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 check this it is very simple now my question is if a set is containing three elements then how many reflexive relations should be there at the same time if a set is containing n elements then how many reflexive relations should be there try to answer this question how many reflexive relations should be there for a set which is containing n elements for example here b was containing two elements c was containing one element a was containing four elements on the set a which is containing four elements how many reflexive relations can be there how many different reflexive relations can be there on the set b which is containing two elements how many different reflexive relations we can get we are getting four reflexive relations right in the same way if a set is containing n elements then how many reflexive relations can be there now for this to understand first of all understand this way if a is containing four elements if the set a that means if the cardinality of the set a is four then what is the cardinality of the set a cross a it will be 4 cross 4 which is equal to 16 4 cross 4 which is equal to 16 right now for a relation has if, if a relation has to be reflexive in that case this 1 comma 1 should be there this 2 comma 2 should be there this 3 comma 3 should be there this 4 comma 4 should be there these elements should be there but for other elements we have a choice either we can put this element in a reflexive relation or we don't want to put it either we can put this element on, on a reflexive relation or we don't want to put it either we can put this element on a reflexive relation or we don't want to put it either we can put this element on a reflexive relation or we don't want to put it for every element we have two choices right so if this set is containing approximately 16 elements out of these 16 elements these four elements should be there in the reflexive relation so how many elements are remaining it is 16 minus 4 which is equal to 12 so you can see 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. 12 elements are there. Right. So for this element, we have a choice we have two choices. Either it can be in the reflexive relation or it may not be. For this element, we have two choices. For this element, we have two choices. For this element, we have two choices. For all these 12 elements, we have two two choices. So how many choices we have? We have approximately 2 raised to power 12 choices we have approximately 2 raised to power 12 choices that means there are 2 raised to power 12 different reflexive relations which can be there you can verify it here for example the set b is containing two elements then obviously b cross b is going to contain four elements b cross b is going to contain four elements now out of these four four elements these two elements should always be there in a flexible relation we don't have a choice for these two elements but we have a choice for these elements either this element can be there in a flexible relation or not either this element can be there in a reflexive relation or not so how many choices we have two cross two that means four choices that means one two three four four reflexive relations will be there in a simpler manner in a simpler manner if a set a is containing n elements then a cross a is going to contain n cross n that means two that means that means n square elements n square elements if a relation has to be reflexive then obviously the ordered pair which is the diagonal elements that is 1 1 and 2 2 there is a diagonal element here in this case 1 1 th uh, 2 2 3 3 and 4 4 they are diagonal elements if you write it in the form of a square then you can find these are diagonal elements then these diagonal elements should be there in a reflexive relation now if a relation has to be reflexive that means how many diagonal elements will be there n diagonal elements will be there so we don't have choice for these n diagonal elements and how many elements which are remaining there will be n square minus n remaining elements for which we have choices for which we have choices for example here in this case there are four elements we have total 
फोर स्क्वायर दैट मीन सिक्सटीन सिक्सटीन एलिमेंट्स इन द ए क्रॉस ए सेट राइट एंड देर आर अप्रॉक्सीमेटली फोर डायगनल एलिमेंट्स सो एन स्क्वायर माइनस एन दैट इज फोर स्क्वायर माइनस फोर विच इज इक्वल टू ट्वेल्व एलिमेंट्स आर देयर फॉर विच वी हैव अ चॉइस now if i have to give an example if i have to give a number that if you are having n elements then for these n elements approximately n square 2 raised to power n square minus n choices will be there 2 raised to power n square minus n choices will be there that means if a set is containing n elements then for over that particular set you can have 2 raised to power n square minus n different reflexive relations which are possible right so just write in it again it is 2 raised to power n square minus and these are the number of flexible relations which are possible now the, my next question is if these are the number of flexible relations which are possible then how many relations can be there which are not reflexive how many relations can be there which are not reflexive right so total in total how many relations can be there for over this set over this set If a is containing n elements, if a set a is containing n elements, then there are two raised to power n, ah, uh, two raised to power, ah, uh, n square relations are possible of over a set a. There are two raised to power n square relations are possible in total. Out of these two raised to power n square relations, there are two raised to power n square minus n relations are there, which are reflexive, which are. Reflexive. Two raised to the power n square minus n relations, which are reflexive. If I have to give you an answer that how many relations are there which are not reflexive, then I have to subtract this term from this term. That is two raised to the power. That is, um, I should write it here. That is two raised to the power n square minus two raised to the power n square minus n. So these many relations are there which are not reflexive. Which are not reflexive. Which are not reflexive okay it is a very simple thing to cover i think so right so the next type of relation which we are going to cover will be irreflexive relation but before that let us just cover very basic properties of reflexive relation that means the closer property of a reflexive relation that mean even if you do union uh, between two reflexive relation can you get a reflexive relation if you do intersection between two reflexive relation can you get a reflexive relation and so on let us look at those properties now 